Good morning, my friends. Um, today I wanted to share with you Turner Artist Watercolor. Uh, I also wanted to share, this is my Holbein 30 set that I had. Uh, I had a few additional colors to this, but they're starting to get low. And I have loved them and loved every single one of them. And they're so good. They're a nice set if anybody wants to try them. Um, a few of these colors do have white added. So they're not, it's not a complete transparent watercolor palette. But some of my favorite colors of all time are in this palette. Like Cobalt Violet Light. <laughs> my hunt for a new Oriolan. Is that Oriolan? Yes, it is. Oriolan, which I love. Um... And yeah, so I really, really love these. They've done me well. Um, so I want to keep my collection that I currently have. And I'm down to just the last few half pans of my set that I have. So I'm keeping these. Um, and so I decided I got some Turner watercolors. So I'm just showing you the little box. This little box anyway. That's what this one here came in. And now a few things about this particular company. This is a Japanese company as well, just like Holbein. Um, the watercolors come from Osaka, Japan. Uh, and I figured, well, so far all the, Japan the Japanese paints that I've tried, I've absolutely loved. So why not give these a try? They're a reasonable price, 15 milliliter tube. Um, this one here, I ordered separate from the set. This is a Series F color of... Uh, cobalt turquoise it's my favorite color so I want to see uh, what this color in particular looks like once it's swatched out and this is the 18 set um, and I'm slowly going to be replacing the pans I've got to buy some more pans now one other thing I did want to talk to you about with these particular watercolors is that I have been told they can have a tendency to crack in the pan so I picked up some glycerin I'm not going to be putting them in pans today I'm just putting them in a little egg crate palette so that I can swatch them out and see what the colors are and just get a general first impression of them I don't really like to do a review of something unless I've really had some time with it so I'm just putting that there so I know where to put it and without further ado let's swatch these out so um, I'll put these aside put this right here I'm just kind of behind the camera right now I want to keep it so that let's put it over here I want to keep it so that you guys can see really well um, okay so now I'm all set up um, the first color that we have is Pyro Red, which is PR254. I have it written down here. This is a Series C color. For those of you who are new to watercolor, Series means Series A to F um, is a standard that companies use to tell you how much it, how much the pigments are worth. So for instance, the Series F Cobalt Violet is an expensive pigment. This one here is a Series C, so it's um, it's a moderately expensive pigment. Um, I don't have Pyrol currently, so it's kind of nice. And I just want to get over here. I haven't even opened these yet. Ooh, okay. Let's take a look. I've heard good and bad things about these watercolors and I do see a little bit of separation from the binder which I've heard is pretty normal for these that it can happen so let's see here I want I did put a black line of sharpie just to I don't just want to mix that up a little put the black line of sharpie just to be able to measure the transparency so you can see it uh, this one here is considered a semi transparent pigment so let's get this going ooh that's beautiful py pr254 is this pigment now right from the tube they're beautiful i'm not sure what they're like for rewetting i've heard it's not the best 
that they dry a little hard in the pan. I've only experienced that from Windsor Newton so far. But I like the pigmentation. These are supposed to be very heavy pigmented. Yes, they do have beautiful pigment. So for somebody who is building up their collection, these are a really, really nice set to be able to do that with and start. Now this one here is Permanent Scarlet. Oh, and this one here has a light fast rating of three, which means very good or excellent. And these are considered artist grade watercolors. I don't know if I'm going to end up using them straight from the tube and just letting them dry in these and using them out of these or if I'm gonna I gotta get some new pans and see what I'll do I'm not sure that's a pretty color now um, the scarlet red is a series B and or permanent scarlet um, it's a translucent color and it's made with PR 188 and it's a series, it's a two star light fast rating. So not quite as good as a three star. A lot of the Japanese companies um, I find go with a one to three star rating as opposed to, um, as opposed to uh, one being the better of the light fastness, one, you know, two. Sorry, I'm losing my train of thought because that's a really pretty color. And I'm really enjoying that. Just want to see. Now, Turner says that they do not use fillers. They, um, it's made with gum arabic, similar to other brands, other Western brands. The dispersion seems nice. Yeah, that's a nice color. And I've checked out all the YouTube, um, all the YouTube videos on these paints. This one here is a Series B Permanent Gamboche, which is kind of nice because I don't have a gamboche. This one here is a mixture paint. There is, I believe, three different pigments. We have a little bit, you can see a little bit of separation from the binder, but that's okay. We'll just mix it up. All right, let me see this time. I need to put down my water. Okay, so Permanent Gamboge is Series B, if I didn't mention that. It is a combination of PY110, PY150, so two different yellows, uh, three different yellows, and PY109. So I'm curious. Let's see, I'll turn this like this so you can see a little better. Just want to mix it a little bit more just because the binder separated a bit. <clears throat> Pardon me. All right. And this is considered a transparent pigment. The way to tell your transparency, when you do your black line with your Sharpie or permanent marker, or whatever it is that you're using, um, if it's not transparent, you'll see a residue over the black line. Now, in a highly pigmented set, it can almost be deceiving. It's just because you're using a lot of paint. Ooh, I like the way that it washes out. That is pretty, pretty yellow. Ooh, yes, I will have fun with that. Love that. Okay, so next we have Permanent Yellow, which is a Series B pigment, and it is PY154, which I don't currently have PY154, so it's nice to have an addition. A little bit of separation there, too. Okay, 
So for the next few days, because I don't currently have enough pans, I think I've got uh, eight or ten pans in my set that I have left over. I'm going to have to order some. It'll be a few weeks before I order some. So I'm just going to put them in here and use them right out of here. And we'll see how they dry in here. Hopefully, because I'm not putting too much paint. And this is considered a transparent pigment as well. Now, you can tell how highly pigmented they are when you put them down. You really can. The reason why I like to do color swatches is because then it gives you a feel for your paints before you actually go in and you use them. Um, I like to do this and do some uh, just some color mixing see how they mix with other colors my favorites are single pigment mixtures so far um, but the whole lines have many multiple mixtures so at first I was a little disappointed with my whole binds but I didn't really know I was just learning and then I realized too that some pigments like Oriolan has a combination of three colors. The original Oriolan PY40 is a fugitive color. So a lot of companies had to change it so that it didn't end up fading out to this horrible looking brownish color uh, and the pigment would actually last. Okay, so the next color that I have is Lemon Yellow. And Lemon Yellow is a Series C pigment it is made with PY109. It is transparent and has a three-star light fast rating. So let's give this a try. See, I see a little bit. I don't know if you can see. See where the top is there? That's how you can tell the separation in the binder. So, but well, I'm going to give it a squeeze anyway. I feel like I'm wasting so much paint. <laughs> I just want to mix that up a little. Just to get the binder and the, the pigment back together. What I'll end up doing is I ran out of Q-tips. I have barbecue skewers. I could I consider using those, but I think they're a little big. So when I get my pans, I'll grab some Q-tips. Let me make sure you can still see this. And I really like that permanent yellow. That's a beautiful, beautiful yellow. Now, lemon yellow I don't really use a lot of, but I'm... The reason why I didn't use a lot of it in the Holbein set is because it was made with, it had PW6 in it, which is a white pigment. And I don't always like, because it makes them semi-opaque. Um, and I don't always like opaque pigments. This is beautiful though. This is PY109. I don't think I have PY109. I'm going to do a comparison. Um, once they're all swatched out and I get a little bit of time with them, I'm going to go through the current pigments that I have, look at my Daniel Smiths, look at my, my Hansas, all my yellows. I want to be able to compare them to, to this. Now, although these pigments are showing up as being, uh, they actually, they don't look transparent. I can tell that the pigment load in these is high. These are gorgeous. And I'm also going to be doing, I got the um, Sennelier test set. And it's a beautiful little set. And now that I got it, now I want all the Sennelier test sets. And um, I'll show that to you as well in a different video. But Okay, so the next one is olive green. This is... Out of all my greens, I use sap green and olive green uh, as my convenience mixtures. 
olive green is the one that I actually use more because I do a lot of botanicals and flower uh, flowers, a lot of florals. That one looks good. There we go. Good. And there's no separation. Oh, it's coming out fast. Oh dear. All right. Well, let's see what I can do. So, I guess I'm going to be using this little tray for a long time <laughs> until these are used up. But it shouldn't take me too long. I paint every day. So, okay. Well, so far, the consistency of it's really nice. Now, I've heard that the worst ones for uh, drying hard and cracking in this set are the Maya colors, and there is a Maya blue in here, um, which is a very unique pigment, so I'm quite happy to get it. Even if it does, it's hard to reactivate. I'll try adding some glycerin to it and see how that turns out. Okay, so for olive green, now their olive green is a convenience mixture, because I don't really... It's very rare that I buy greens. The greens that I have are usually just greens in sets, unless it's Daniel Smith's Green Gold, which I absolutely love, and that is a must-have for my palette. I will buy it all the time. Because um, even the Green Gold mixtures that I can mix with my pigments, they they just don't they don't have the right glow. This is considered a transparent pigment, even though you wouldn't know it right now, but I've got thick, thick paint on here. So I'm just going to bring this down a little bit. And so far, I like the dispersion. I like some of the granulation that I'm starting to see, which when I first started watercoloring, um, I didn't like granulation. It was, yes, it is a transparent pigment. Once you, you got to wet it down a little bit because these are, these are very pigmented. These are, they kind of, they're kind of like M. Graham in the sense of the pigment. They're, um, they have a lot of punch in the pigment load. So you really don't need a lot of paint, which is nice. I've heard everything from bad reviews to good reviews on these. Some people love them. Some people hate them. Right now, I'm quite impressed, but I haven't dried them in pans and went through the frustration of them cracking and drying. So we'll see after a month or two what I think of these. That's generally when I like to give a review, like my Holbein's. At first, it, it took a little while to get used to those. All right, I don't know if I said, um, the olive green is a three star light fast rating, which is excellent. It's a series B color. Um, it has PY 110. So where is it? Oh, that was PY, PY 109. I thought it was PY 110. PY 110, PR 101, which is like a, um, almost like a rust color pigment, or sometimes I see PR 101 used with, um, uh, sienna or uh, I even seen it added to a yellow ochre in the Windsor Newton stick set which surprised me um, and it is a translucent pigment it also has PG7 which is like a phthalo phthalo green and that's actually going to come up next so speaking of phthalo green this is oops, sorry about that this is Thalo Green. It's a single pigment made with PG7, which I absolutely love. It's not my favorite color, but I love that it's a single pigment. And it looks good with the binder right now. Sometimes, oh yeah, there's a little bit of separation there. Let's see. Now, although this isn't my favorite color, I prefer using a Viridian, a PG-18, over the PG-7. But it's a more expensive pigment. Um, but, you know, it's phthalo green. It's nice to have. It's a single pigment color, so if I want to do some mixes, it's nice to be able to have that color and mix it with my single pigment yellows. Let's take a look. It's very similar to, I find this color very, very similar to um, Viridian. 
even in my acrylics, I don't use phthalo green a lot. And if I do use it, I use it as a mixing color. Very, very rarely do I use it alone. But what is nice is that it mixes nice with, um, if you enjoy turquoise colors, it mixes really nice with turquoise. It makes some beautiful, beautiful turquoise. Mix it with phthalo blue. All right. And I'm just putting the pigment on at first because it's really thick. I'm putting the pigment on dry. Then I'm adding a bit of water and moving it around. And then I'm putting, I rinse it off my brush, put more water so that I can see the pigment just plain on its own. See, I'm just like that. It's so hard. I want to like smear it everywhere. <laughs> I'm obsessed. Very beautiful. Oh, and this is the Thalo Blue uh, Green Shade. Um, or Thalo Green Blue Shade, sorry. Uh, and it's got a three-star rating and it's translucent. Very translucent, as you can see. And it's gorgeous. I love that. Now, the next color we have, we're going to start down here. And we'll just, I'm going to adjust this a little bit. We're going to be going into, okay, I did sap green. Sorry, I got a little lost. Uh, oh, there we are. I got a little lost in all my swatches. Okay, so the next one is sap green. So, here is sap green. And Sap Green is a Series B mixture. It's a convenience color. It's one of the few convenience colors that I will that I will buy on occasion. But usually they just come in sets. So you really don't have to buy greens. You just mix greens. Um, and it's a translucent color made of PG36 and PY110. So, oh, I keep thinking then that permanent yellow permanent lemon is a PY110. It's a PY109. Uh, okay. Uh, and who else? Okay. That's all we need to know about this one. Uh, and it's got a three star permanency rating, which is good. It's got a little separation from the binder. Now, Let's take a look. I might have to redo my waters. Let's take a look at how this one here. Let's see. I'm going to pull it over so you can see it a little bit more. And see some of these mixtures before I get them all over my hands. And this is just a ceramic egg tray from Dollarama for $4. And I love using them. So far, it looks like a really nice sap green. I would compare it. Um, I have the Schmincke sap green, and I've also got the, um, what is it called? The Holbein sap green. Those ones are really good. But this looks really nice. All right. It's definitely transparent. I'm just putting it on raw, like straight with no water because I want to see the dispersion. Dispersion means that when you add water to it, the flow, when it whooshes. Um, here. I'm trying to keep my arm out of the way here for you guys. Get a good look. It doesn't have a huge whoosh, which is okay. Because I've been using Holbein, Holbein does not contain Oxcall. And Oxcall is a dispersion agent um, that gives you that big whoosh. Um, having the big whoosh in watercolor, it makes your watercolors exciting, like fireworks, but there can be a downside to it. The downside being um, it can be harder to keep control of your watercolor so all right okay now 
uh, the next pigment is one I'm super, super excited about. This one here I bought special and I love my cobalts. I'm, I know they're highly toxic, but I love, love, love my cobalts. Um, this is cobalt turquoise and I was running out of my cobalt blue light from my Holbein, which is this little guy right here. You can see and cobalt turquoise light and this one is made from where is that i'm gonna not even be able to see it on this little tube it's a series d pigment through holbein and it's pigment pb i believe it's 28 i gotta bring it closer yeah pb 28 so this one here is also uh this one is actually made of PB36 and PG50. And I have PG50 in the Daniel Smith watercolor stick. And it's a, it's a, um, a greenish shade of cobalt. I love it. Ooh, so pretty. I'm like, turquoise is one of my staple colors. I have to have turquoise. And turquoise light. All right, let's take a look. I'm gonna bring this closer so you can see my absolute one of my favorite colors, turquoise and pink. And um, I do buy the cobalt violet light, which I'm gonna do a comparison because I bought the PWC cobalt violet light, and there is a difference between that and Holbein. It's a different pigment, but um, it's hard to find good a good cobalt violet light and I paint a lot of florals so I do use it this is a semi-transparent pigment by the way series F it's expensive to make but I love it all right See, when you put it on thick like that, it's, I mean, obviously it's going to be, here, I just want to go like that. It's going to be thick and cover the black line, but, okay, so let's go like this. Just go like that. Let's see what kind of flow we can get. It's a little darker than I was expecting compared to my cobalt turquoise light in Holbein. That one's a very, very light pigment. It's my absolute favorite so far. I would consider this a semi-transparent pigment, which is what they said, and it granulates. It has the most beautiful granulation. God, I love granulation. I'm going to pause the video for one second and just replace my water because as you can see these pigments are quite dark thank you so much okay so i've got some clear water and now we're on to the turquoise The turquoise pigment that they offer, it's right here. It's a Series B pigment. It's turquoise blue. It has a three-star rating. So does this one here. I don't know if I if I said that. Uh, three-star rating, rating, so excellent light fastness. I think in this entire 18 set, there are two with a two-star rating. And one is the Permanent Scarlet, and the other one is Dioxazine Violet, which I already have Daniel Smith's Dioxazine Violet. So this one's going to be put aside for now until time comes that I that I really require it um, but the turquoises I do need Ooh, pretty and this one is made with PB 28 and it's a granulating pigment which I love Oh, 
All right. So this time I'm going to try wetting this side first. Now, I'm just going to Ooh, that's a pretty color. This is actually closer to my Holbein's, uh, my Holbein's turquoise light. Cobalt turquoise light. Now this is a cobalt pigment because it's PB28. Ooh, ooh, I love it. Okay, this color is gorgeous. Gorgeous. Oh, you are so pretty. So pretty. Oh, I'm going to love working with this color. Okay. So. In the grand scheme of things, if you could only get one of these two colors, I would get, even though this one is the Series F up here, uh, and this one's the Series B, I'd probably get the B. But it's really close to... Um, almost like a combination between a cobalt and a manganese violet if you wash them out um very like a brilliant blue uh like bluey green almost like a like how you would imagine a tropical sea um is how i see that color i love it oh it's so pretty god i'm crazy <laughs> i'm so crazy about paint okay <laughs> This is Thalo Blue Green Shade, Series A, and it has a three-star light fastness rating, uh, so excellent. Um, and it's also transparent. This is a semi-transparent, which, yes, I do. Looking at it, you can tell. You can see the granulation above the, or not granulation, you can see the pigment particles above the, the black line. Okay, that looks good. Give her a try. Oh, that came out quick. Come on, cat. Get on there. I don't want to waste paint. I might scoop some of these up and put them in a few of the pans that I've got. I'll show you. This is what I've been doing. I have this little set. Um, this is the Windsor Newton stick set that I got. I might turn it into a little watercolor pan thing. I don't use these watercolor sticks. I have been using them. I've been trying so hard to like them and I just don't. I don't. I wouldn't recommend them to anybody. I think Winsor Newton really, I don't like whatever binder they put it with. It's waxy. I don't know if you can tell by, you can really see it in here and in the Viridian and the Thalos. It almost, the waxiness almost gives it a film looks like a film and I've tried drawing with them I've tried taking them with me when I go someplace just to have some color and be able to you know watercolor on the go without having to bring my pans and um I don't like it I would not recommend them um these are the whole vine pigments that I've pulled out of my palette right now I'm saving those these are my empty pans so I'll probably scoop up some of this paint and put them in some of these pans. I've only got 10, but the turquoise, oh my goodness, I want that in my palette. <laughs> so let's take a look. All right, phthalo. Now, phthalo blue in watercolors. I don't really use phthalo blue as much. This is phthalo blue green shade, which is usually nice for doing like seas and stuff like that mixed with uh, turquoise blue or the cobalt turquoise light. Um, but I'm just wetting the whole thing right now. I know I'm not the most consistent, but oh, I'm an artist. <laughs> I want to play with these so bad right now. Start making color wheels and see what blends together nice. This is a very beautiful pigment. Nice and strong. It's a three-star rating. Same as the other ones. This is a single pig pigment PB15, which I enjoy. I like having... it's. This is really nice. I'll probably use this Thalo. I use Thalo more in my acrylics work than I do in my watercolor 
colors because I have out of my watercolors I've got so many beautiful pigments to choose from for my blues whoops sorry about that I have so many beautiful pigments to choose from for my blues that sometimes thalo just kind of gets left behind unless I'm doing like a night sky and then I mix it with some some other dark colors just to make it dark but this particular color I will definitely use this one that's gorgeous I'm just saying I don't know if it comes across on camera I don't know how well it's coming across but this is it's a beautiful beautiful blue highly pigmented Yes, I prefer the whoosh with the Daniel Smith, the dispersion rate, better with the Daniel Smith paints that I have. But, these are nice paints. Alright. Oh, I guess I skipped a row there. Or I didn't skip a row, I just went down to the next one. This is Ultramarine Blue. This is made with PB29. Oh, no, wait. Oh, yeah. Here, I'm going to move this. Sorry, I got a little mixed up there for a minute. Um, okay, we got ultramarine blue. We got two more over here. I don't know what I'm thinking today. I'm going to make another cup of coffee when this video is over. But I got so excited. I wanted to swatch them and I wanted to play with them. And I, but I wanted you to see my, my actual reaction from opening them and for it to be like a legitimate reaction so that you're seeing my first impressions, my first thoughts of these. And so far, my impressions are really good. All right. Now, this is Ultramarine Blue. It's a Series A pigment and it's a three-star rating. It's considered a transparent pigment. And... It's made with PB29. Gorgeous. I recently acquired the Sennelier Ultramarine from the test set. And I had tried it on a dot card previous to that. And I fell in love with the dot card. Um... I have never used ultramarine blue so much as I have with my watercolors. Um, with my acrylics, it's it's easy to have convenience colors, you know, and to not um, they dry quickly. So I don't want to spend a lot of time mixing. So I'll buy more convenience colors. Oh, I love that! I'm loving the granulation. It's gorgeous. Here, I just want to put some water right here. And just touch it and see what it does. To me, watching when you touch water to watercolor paint and watching the paint flow into the water petal, it's one of the most beautiful, beautiful, like magics in the world. And it's gorgeous. Okay, so we are on to Maya Blue. And I'm out of space. My little oops my little 12 color palette so here are the mixtures and colors and they are gorgeous and I'm just using an old Reeves tin that I had this is super old I was given this many many years ago before I even watercolored I didn't even know what to do with it when I got it I threw it in a drawer it had a plastic thing in it and the plastic thing, this is the Maya Blue. This one here, I'm very interested in finding out. Now, this one in particular, from the reviews, has, whoops. Okay, so it's set it, separated from the binder a little. There. From the reviews, this one here, it's a very unique pigment. It's PB82. Uh, it's an ancient pigment, like one that they used to use a long, long time ago, similar to uh, ultramarine, used to be used with lapis lazuli, right? Um, now, but the Maya Blue, apparently, it does not re-wet nice. It dries to like a plastic heart, and you have to spray your pans with water and really give them that time to re-wet 
Now, and I can tell just by looking at this pigment. Yeah, and it is a granulating pigment, I believe. I'll know in a few minutes. Okay. It's beautiful. It's almost, it's almost turquoise in color. Very unique. It, it almost reminds me of some of the Daniel Smith paints I've tried. A couple of the colors that I've tried. I'm trying to think lunar blue. I think it reminds me of the lunar blue in Daniel Smith. I'll have to dig out my swatch cards, but I'm pretty sure that that's the color I'm thinking. I love my Daniel Smith. They're just expensive. <laughs> but I buy the Daniel Smith watercolor sticks, all the colors that I could possibly get, and then they're a little bit less expensive. And I have a great art store that I go to, and they really do their best to get all my needs taken care of as an artist. Okay, that is gorgeous. It's very unique. It does. It really, oh, it granulates. Gorgeous. Be interesting to see some mixtures with that one. All right. Yeah, the next one we have is dioxazine purple, which I don't really use a lot of dioxazine purple. I'll show you my palette. Right now, my palette is under construction because of getting these paints. So you can see these little sticks right here. These are my Daniel Smith sticks and they work fabulous and I love them. Uh, this is my current palette. So I have Carbazol Violet. I have Imperial Violet, which I really love. There is a, a granulation to this one where the pink and the purple mixtures in this separate. Moon Glow is a convenience mixture, but it's so beautiful. It's one of the most beautiful shadow mixtures. I found I I had a problem where I put it in one painting and I didn't, it was new to me and I still don't know what I mixed it with, but I mixed it with one of my greens and it did not mix well. So I need to play with this one more, find out more about it, do some mixtures, make sure, because I ruined that painting. Mineral Violet, this is a Holbein pigment. I think I pulled it out. Yeah, I pulled that one out of the range. This one's nice, but it's nothing... It wasn't like a special purple. The cobalt violet uh, light. This is the special purple. This one here, this is a Series D pigment through, but I think it's one of their most expensive pigments. Um, for a 15 mil tube, it's $44.99. So I'm on the hunt for new cobalt violet light. Um, and you can see here, here's some of my turquoise. Uh, this is cobalt turquoise light. This is the manganese blue. So you can see Holbein's, here I think I can put that down there, Holbein's Magnese Blue is very similar to this. This one is almost, it's almost identical, you know what I mean? But there is some difference in hue. So I'm in the middle of moving around my palette right now and adding new stuff to it. So back to... Dioxazine violet. Now this one I have in my acrylics. It's not a purple. It's it's a nice dark purple for um I I usually generally mix this with magenta. Magenta and phthalo blue to get really nice vibrant dark skies. So I very very rarely use black. It's just not a pigment I enjoy. It makes things flat and if I do use black I always add color to it always always blue red magenta whatever color you want to add to it just add a color to it because it'll create depth in your paintings it's a pretty violet I like my other ones this one's pretty though I will use it, just not right now, because as you can see, I have many violets in my in my palette. I like the way it's dispersing. And 
I believe it. Yeah, that's a granulating violet. Beautiful. I like, sorry, <laughs> I don't mean to go for me. It's okay to, oh, I love that. It's beautiful. It's the granulate. Okay, and now the next color that we have is their yellow ochre, which is a semi-transparent pigment. It's series A and made with PY43. Uh, PY, now my understanding, there's two different pigments that you can find with yellow ochre. There's PY42, which I believe is a chemically produced uh, pigment. And if I'm wrong on this, please do correct me because uh, I'm not always right. And it's a learning process. There's so many different colors and pigments and all those things to art that you really do. You just kind of learn one at a time and you start picking them up. And But I try to make sure that I'm giving correct information. So... PY42 is a synthetic chemically made pigment. PY43 is the natural, uh, the natural pigment. And I'd have to pull up the pigment number to remember the full scientific term of it, because uh, I cannot remember it without that, the, the chemical, the actual chemical term. Um, the light fastness is three star. So, but yellow ochres usually are. Earth tones in general are usually your most light fast colors. And, but I am, okay, whoops, that's, it's coming out fast. All right. I've been using yellow ochre more and more. I usually use it in a combination with greens. Um, and, but I use it more and more as my with my earth tones as I've been um, usually if I'm painting landscapes is when I'll use this color or animals okay so there it is just put on thick just as a, this is what we call like a mass tone so you got your thick mass tone it's beautiful now I'm just adding water Um, now I'm going to pull, and it is a granulating pigment, just pulling some of this away. I just want to see the, the wash tone, where it's all washed out. It's beautiful. It's a really beautiful yellow ochre. I have tried yellow ochres that I don't like. I don't like the Winsor Newton brand yellow ochre. Um... And the Holbein one was okay, but I really like that one. Next, I have Burnt Sienna. Now, I, I have found more and more that Burnt Umber and Burnt Sienna, especially in my watercolors, that I really, I've been using them quite a bit. Not, uh, I do use them in landscapes. There's a bit of separation with this one. I do use them a little bit in landscapes and with animals. If you need a brown, it's they're nice browns. But where I actually really use them is I use them in combination with ultramarine blue for, I like the neutral. I don't buy neutral tint. It's a convenience mixture that you can buy. Um, neutral, tint, neutral tint is usually uh, a mixture pigment, similar to green, several different pigments, um, where it'll give you... Uh, it gives you a nice neutral so that say you're doing a color and it's too bright. If you're doing realism work, a lot of realism work, um, colors are not usually as bright as we think they are. To us, they're very bright, but it's actually the colors beside them and around them and the colors used in the painting that make it look bright. It's like an optical illusion. And as a painter and as you start getting into works of realism, you really, um, that's when you start really learning that things are a lot duller and it's the splashes of pigment that really, that really make things pop. You don't need, if your entire painting's bright, it will be a bright painting, but it won't have the same impact that a painting will if you use dull colors and then put in punches of full color. And I really like that. This is a PBR7. It's a three-star uh, three mixture. It's transparent, which is beautiful. Uh, it's burnt sienna. 
I use this color quite a bit. It's one of my staple colors. And when it's mixed with ultramarine blue, uh, it makes a beautiful gray. I very rarely buy Payne's gray. But if there is a gray that I want to have, it's Payne's, which I do have a uh, Sennelier Payne's. Okay, so this one is Burnt Umber. This color as well. When this one mixes with a neutral, it's like a, a medium neutral. When this one mixes with a neutral, this one is a darker neutral. And that's really the only difference. And with sepia, don't buy sepia. Sepia is usually a color mixture of either a burnt umber, like a PBR7, and whoops, a PBR7 and ivory black or a black of some sort. So if you really want a sepia and you want darker brown than this, just mix a little black in if you've got black on your palette. And something interesting that I found out because I have been researching Chinese paintings. Oh, this one's quite separated. I've been researching Chinese painting and um, Chinese, or Chinese painting, Japanese painting, Chinese colors, just because I really, when you start trying out different paints, like in America, we have beautiful paints available and beautiful pigments available. But the Chinese and Japanese have been making pigments and making paint for many, many years. So although I love, love, love my Daniel Smiths, they're probably my favorite, even beyond the, these ones here, even beyond my Holbeins. They're my favorite right now. Um, but Chinese and Japanese really, they know their paints. And I've been playing with um, actual Japanese paint and learning uh, calligraphy and practicing brush strokes and um, learning about um, sumi and pink or uh, ink, bleh, pink, and learning about um, sumi art. And it's very interesting. I just want to pull this out a little bit. This is beautiful. This is a beautiful, beautiful pigment. I'm liking the way that it's granulating. These are all very, very pigmented, which I love. There we go. Now, the only two colors left are black and Chinese white. Oh, what I was gonna say. I lost my train of thought, sorry about that. Uh, okay, so in Chinese paints, they have five primary colors. They've got blue, red, and yellow, like we do, but white and black are also considered, are also considered primaries. Um, the black ink in the, in the paintings that you see, color is actually added as a secondary and not, it's not their primary focal in a, in a painting. The color is added for punch for it. It's, um, it's just not the, I find that so interesting. It's just not the focal in the painting. And whereas for us or for me anyway, I'm all about the color. So this is the black and this is PBK nine. It has a three star, excellent light fast rating. This is considered semi-transparent, which actually surprised me. Uh, because a lot of blacks will have an opaque, uh, they'll be considered opaque, and this is not the blackest black I've ever used. So I just want to see how black I can get it here for a minute. Yeah, that's beautiful. In the realms of black, it's a pretty nice black. Because I didn't, you know, I don't really use black, but there are some times where having black is nice. There we go. Okay, so that's the 18 range, plus one for the uh, cobalt turquoise. Now, uh, and the only other thing that I'm gonna do is I'll just show you 
the difference between the two neutrals of the burnt sienna and the burnt umber. So here is burnt sienna. Just so you can see it. Let me that out. And here is burnt umber. Nice darker mixture. They're both the same pigment, just one's darker than the other. And I'm taking my, I'm just adjusting my camera here really quick. Bring it down to it. Because of the water and the reflection of the light, it's making it hard. There, that's a little better. It's making it a little bit hard to see the actual color. Now I'm just taking my ultramarine blue. These are my favorite muted tones, and many, many artists use this combination. It's not, uh, it's one of the first go-tos. I put quite a bit of pigment on here, so we're going to go, we'll go this one. Gives you like a bluey gray tone, very similar to a Payne's gray. And this is my go-to neutral. And just to show you what it looks like washed out. And what I like is because they're both granulating colors, you get granulations of the brown and the blue in this mixture. And it really, it's, it's like a little treat when you go back and you're looking at your paintings. It's like a little surprise. And the paints just went, oh, surprise, look at us. Look what we're doing. It's like they dance. They dance together. Okay, so I gotta add some more PBR7 to this. To be able to show you a little bit better. Oh, there it is. There. So you can see, it's very similar. This tone is a little bit more reddy, reddish. But yeah, beautiful neutrals. So just in case for anybody who, for anybody who buys neutral tint and you don't want to buy your pigment, that's how you mix your neutrals. Um, there's lots of different neutrals out there, but it's one option. Um, so yeah, this is the, let's bring this down. This is the Turner watercolor range, professional artist grade. This is what the box looks like and their little overview I thought this was nice a flicker in the sky a whisper in the wind speaking of bright color of the pure shade within the brush moves so easily the color spreads so well a material of choice expressive surfaces propel I thought that was nice so this is the range um so far, I have to admit, I'm pretty impressed. I was worried. Um, we'll see how it goes as I put them in pans and how they dry. And we'll see how bad the cracking is. Um, but that can be remedied with some glycerin. Um, I could use honey, but I think glycerin is going to be the way to go based on some videos that I've watched. Um, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching my review or my first impressions video. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye-bye.